Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the Brightworks. When's the last time we've taken a look at Folsom Dam, huh? Had to queue this one up myself in order to get this game played, but uh, I was really itching to see this this uh, incredible map once more. Reminds me of a uh, race that I used to do. I would run on the uh, the Handsome Dam. Not Handsome. I call you Chris Handsome. <laughs> uh, no, sorry, getting, getting sidetracked by my sidetrack there. Um, but anyway... Super, super excited to bring you Hanson, or not Hanson Dam, Folsom Dam. <laughs> better, better go show this to you so you don't get confused. Folsom Dam 1.6. Uh, it's a really cool map. It's got this bottom lane that's got these rivers from the, uh, well, the dam up north, like canonically speaking anyways, but it's got these this river terrain. It's got sort of this uh, high ground terrain over on the very southern side, as well as this sort of flatland. So good for vehicles, bots, all that sort of loving, love, lovely, lovely stuff. Loving and lovely stuff, I suppose. It's got this middle ground, of course, which is reclaimable, very metal, many energy, just as uh, just as I wrote there for everyone. <laughs> and Seenok is going to be our brave warrior taking the uh, front line position. So very, very well done to them. That's a very scary position to take. So uh, always lovely to see somebody trying it out. So you might notice that these metal spots are 3.1. So very important to contest these as much as you possibly can. These are also valuable. These uh, squares here. Uh, I'm not sure what to call these little power banks or something like that. Anyways, uh, they have, well, in uh, each one of these, let me see, 150 metal and 500 energy. And then the, uh, the pipes also have metal and energy in them as well. Um, which is great. I really love to see the vehicle or see uh, little like buildings and stuff in this game. And I feel like we never ever get to see those aside from very rarely on very specific maps. So really, really love whenever we get a chance to actually see some interesting designs rather than just rock, tree, fern. <laughs> you know what I mean? Anyway, I'm going to be up north here playing as the uh, purple player. And uh, I'm going to show you this game because it was a fun one and it was an interesting one. And I really think there's a lot to look at here. Uh, I wanted to go revisit it for my own purposes, but I figured why not show you guys around and bring you along for the ride and maybe you guys can learn something too. Anyways, we are uh, two minutes into this game and we still haven't met our players. Let's do a speed run down in the southern lands representing the blue team on the eastern side. We have Kalza. Kalza going to be our blue team leader, a uh, Armada player with a bot lab out already. Looking very, very strong on the western side for our red team. Red team leader going to be an armada commander and already submerged in the depths of the ocean. We have Cor... Uh, wait, no. Cap Caporal... Caporal Sram. Caporal Sram. <laughs> Caporal Sram. There we go. We finally got it. Caporal Sram going to be representing the red navy um, as well as the entire red team. And uh, this is an interesting spread. I, we, were, we were talking about starting positions on this map and I was wondering where everyone would end up because it's not very clear on this map. There's a couple of obvious spawn locations, but there's a, there's, you know, when you play a big match, sometimes you have to improvise, adapt or overcome sometimes all three of the above. Anyways, I'm building up a, uh, building up a shipyard and doing a terrible job at it. <laughs> I, uh, I went for a bot lab so that I could get all these metal extractors on the, uh, the coastline here. But then it meant that I stalled completely on, on metal here, and uh, I, uh, the last, the only thing I could do was eat up my bot lab uh, using this Lazarus here, which for the longest time was just sitting idle over in this area, so I don't know what I was thinking. Absolutely could have just had all of the metal in the world um, and had my cake and ate it too, but <laughs> I guess I just wasn't paying very close attention. Anyways, we do have vehicles out on the front line here for Seenoc, which is very, very nice. These blitzes getting absolutely torn to shreds by the laser cutlery emplaced on top of these nice little light laser turret stands. Ooh, Centurions are brought out. Interesting. We don't see a whole lot of Centurions all, all the time, but they are very powerful. They're a decent counter to the bots, just in the sense that they're extremely tanky. Um, but you do have to be careful with them, because they are slow, very slow, and they can be jumped on by a lot of different things. Janus getting bold here, but it does push forward and do quite a lot of damage to Seenok. Seenok in a little bit of trouble here with the commander. So this is a 2v1? A 3v1? Oh no, we do have support coming in from Humblegar uh, as well as Nilero. Uh, both, of the, both of these players supporting in the uh, back line here, so that is really nicely done. Absolutely critical, because if you lose this middle part of the map, you've lost the entire game. Dolphin v Dolphin here. Uh, as you can see that me and Caporal Sam are, or Caporal SRAM rather, Caporal SRAM have both gone for the, uh, the vehicle bay, or the, uh, the Navy bay rather. He still has a bot lab actually, I wonder how he afforded that. 
Huh. I'm not sure. Somehow affording a, uh, yeah, uh, a naval bay while also affording the uh, units from it. So that's quite interesting. Anyways, just trying to take some good engagements here, catching whatever dolphins I can. Uh, and then moving out whenever it seems possible, whenever it seems viable. As of right now, this is a pretty good, pretty good standing, pretty good position here. The uh, dolphin is, or no, sorry, the submarine is out. The eel is out. Oh, the commander did go down, and it looks like uh, it will be entirely resurrected by Nerdy Zen. So that is a that is a bad position to be in. Uh, Nerdy Zen is the opposed middle middle lane commander, and you can see now they have tons and tons of metal that they can pump into units. That's going to be really really difficult to hold. Starting up that forward vehicle lab as well. I also just donated a whole bunch of dolphins to the Joker. I'm the Joker. I'm the Joker, baby. <laughs> Anyways, yeah, giving giving a whole lot of dolphins, a whole lot of metal, in other words, to uh, your enemies. Never really a good idea. About 400 metal went down there. The uh, eel, I was trying to get some attacks out on this commander here. The eel can do quite a lot of damage to the commander. I think it's about 10% per hit here. And yeah, 9%. So it can do it can do quite a lot of damage. 82. One more. Ooh, no, it does uh, get shut down eventually. Caporal SRAM is still building dolphins. I'm surprised. I feel like we should go for uh, submarines or something to counter. Ah, there we go. Okay, so we do start up the submarines to counter the, uh, the dolphin harassment, but it is going to be a second before those are pumped out and about. Dolphin, meanwhile, having an absolute joy tearing apart these... Uh, the eel, rather, having an absolute joy tearing apart these dolphins. We can see these uh, dolphins are moving around here to try and snipe the the naval lab. I do switch to pumping out a Grim Reaper, and uh, I had a re I had a reason for it. <laughs> I knew I knew exactly what these were going to try and do, um, and indeed the dolphins do jump on top of the naval lab, uh, causing me great distress, great grief, good grief even. Luckily, these uh, construction turrets do survive, which is quite nice. And the, the uh, eels are happy to dismantle these dolphins as quickly as they possibly can. I sent out the Grim Reaper at this point to try and eat up whatever wreckages was left over here. Luckily, the Joker didn't eat them up, so I am going to be able to get those wreckages. This line is pushed forward, but this choke point is really hard to break through, especially if there's a lot of vehicles here. The Janices and the Artillery are both really, really dangerous and really difficult to move past. Meanwhile, Superlux, I haven't even been paying attention to the southern part of this map, Superlux, as well as Kuzla, have both moved forward and uh, have been pushing forward steadily. Securing the middle extractor is very, very nicely done. We do love to see that. Uh, we have a uh, long-range artillery that has been built, a gauntlet, that is just absolutely shelling us to death here. You can see that it's firing away at anything that dares to get a little bit closer. Uh, but for the meantime, the static defense line from Sean Brove is being dismantled. Support bottom is called. And they're definitely going to need it. Meanwhile, the Joker 1 has built a whole lot of hovercraft. And you can see the strategy that I've gone for. Using the commander that is still out in the water, I've decided to eat up that naval lab that fell into the ocean and instead go for this hovercraft platform and potentially build up a, uh, a little bit of a front here. Resurrected this, uh, resurrected this dolphin, actually, and used it to scuff up the Joker. Do a little bit of damage to the Joker, baby. Eventually it will die, though. Oh. I self-destructed that so we couldn't laser it down. Um, I guess I didn't need to. <laughs> guess I didn't need to. So interesting fact about the submarines, when you attack them from behind, uh, they, they can't fight you. So that was my plan here. I had perfect vision from this uh, naval radar station, the sonar station. So I was able to take a beautiful engagement here and just kill one of these submarines completely for free. Apparently it takes three hits from a submarine to kill another submarine, so that's good to know. Always trying to take some good engagements here. And that submarine goes down as well. Caporal Sram is in a little bit of trouble here, as the eels essentially own the pond. But the hover tanks are also out, and the hover tanks are great, especially against any of those uh, offshore torpedo launchers, which cannot shoot hover tanks. I think Caporal Sam probably could have benefited from going for a uh, destroyer here. 
Destroyers tend to be really, really good against those. Um... Oh, did you see that? It was aiming at the dolphin, but it hit the it hit the uh, submarine on accident there. That's quite impressive. Hovercraft tend to be good against these offshore torpedo launchers. The destroyer would have been a perfect counter to these eels. I think that's what I was talking about. Um, this is really annoying, though. Doing a phenomenal job. Nuri Zen as well as Vestanas denying the metal extractor right here. Um, this is essentially the critical point. It'd be too expensive to push in with this army here, but it would be too... Uh, it, it would extend too much of the uh, your enemy's power to allow them to get this metal extractor. Uh, in other words, they're in, they're playing this exactly correctly, and I think Nerdy Zen should probably just go for a tech transition at this point. The uh, generators, the geothermal batteries, are about to be finished, which will be quite powerful. Meanwhile, a couple of these uh, skaters here... Yeah, no, sorry, seekers. Skaters are the... Uh, Skaters are the uh, ship. A couple of these Seekers do get into the back line. I'm going to start harassing everybody about these. Let them know that they have hovercraft to worry about. My uh, dolphin has gone down, which is quite unfortunate. Luckily, we are ready to just go for hovercraft. Queue up a whole bunch of move commands. This is something you can do, by the way. Just shift move command a whole bunch of times if you're worried about missile launchers. Which is exclusively the unit that our uh, player up here, the Joker, has decided to go for. I'm not sure why they decided to go for Tidal Power. Tidal Power is 10. Um, so if you think about, like, in terms of, uh, like, if a, a solar panel, a T1 solar panel costs 150 metal to produce 20 energy versus a Tidal Generator, which is 90 metal. So it'd be, to make, to make 20 energy, you'd have to spend 180 metal. So it's even less efficient than a... Uh, than a, uh, uh, what would you call it, than a um, solar generator on this map. So definitely not worth it here. Meanwhile, blue has pushed forward super, super far. Um, both blues, I guess should, I should say. <laughs> uh, we have Super Lux moving forward with Kelsa, and they are both moving in at a pace here, collapsing this southern line, doing a phenomenal job about it. We do have a bombing run brought out here by Personic. Wait, no, Pers Personoic. Personoic has bombed the entire energy uh, facility of Sean Bruv, who is insisting about the agitators, but has already lost one on the front lines uh, somewhere over here, uh, and is continuing to try and build those, but they are certainly not the move. Meanwhile, the skaters hover forward. Very annoying to deal with, those skaters. They can just, uh, they can be everywhere at once, and they're so speedy. Kaporo Sram is forced to build a whole bunch of these uh, these tidal generators, but man, they just all light up there too. A bunch of energy converters that were built out on the seas. Yeah, these missile uh, missile hovercraft are not going to be very effective, especially against something as fast as these Seekers here. Seekers making very, very light work of all of that. Moving the hovercraft forward, and it's, it's uh, often overlooked, but hovercraft can be a very, very potent naval force. They can dismantle a lot of the naval facilities with relative ease. We are we are stalwarting in the gap right here. There is a lot of bots that have gone down, so it makes sense. This is a really, really potent area to hold on at. Try and try and stage some sort of a mounted defense here. And this front line is looking more and more dangerous. I think I would have loved to see a gauntlet on the front lines here. I think this would have been one area that would have uh, would have provided a really powerful platform for it. Meanwhile, trading seekers for dolphins is a great deal for me. Um, essentially, I understand that there's no way for uh, Caporal Sram here to actually get back into this navy without committing a tremendous amount of resources. So any dolphin I see out on the field just means that their economy is going to be uh, that much weaker. Uh, which puts me in a good mood. Makes me, makes me feel pretty good. I do have uh, units in the back line here working on more and more of these wind turbines, which is the only reason that my economy is growing at a slightly faster rate than uh, Caporal SRAMs here. Also this, getting these uh, constructors out to try and eat up any of the metal that's left on the seafloor. Also going to be very, very powerful. Again, these, these basic submarines can do tremendous damage against uh, against commanders. They also take tremendous damage, so you do have to be careful with them. <laughs> Meanwhile, down south, another front of bots is brought to the front line. That's a bit of a tongue twister for you. Bots brought to the front line. Maybe it's not. Maybe I'm just uh, having a moment there. <laughs> 
Anyway, bots as well as medium tanks here, and those are going to be quite a problem, although you can see how slow they are trying to... Whoops. No, sorry. You can't see at all because this mountain is in my way for some reason. There we go. Sorry about that. <laughs> uh, you can see just how slow these, these uh, tanks are getting up this hill, but it looks like there will eventually be enough of them to push into the back line here. Uh, at the very least, the pink player is in a whole lot of trouble. The hot pink player down south, quiet listener. Uh, who does get their entire economy melted, and then the wind turbines happen next. Those wind turbines are just dangerously explosive. Sean Bruv now has retreated the commander. I think I would have loved to see a commander positioned in such a way that we could have degunned some of these tanks before they ravaged the entire bottom line. But that was not the case, and so a lot of these tanks are going to continue to push forward. We really should have seen some sort of response down south. With control over the entire middle of the map, there was no reason we couldn't have sent units down south to try and regain control of that. Um, so I really think that was a uh, an oversight on, on behalf of the red team here. Sean Bruv does get a nice D-gun. It takes out a couple of those tanks. Hired Goon moves in for another and does get one tank with it. Bull is out now, and that's going to make pretty light work of these T1 units. You can see just how quickly it can destroy them. Meanwhile, I've managed to pressure my opponent off of the uh, off of the lane here. So I am going to start sending in units to try and do as much damage here as possible. Meanwhile, agitators have been built on the back lines of the front lines. <laughs> Weird sentence, but you get what I mean. Uh, unfortunately, it looks like Seenoch has been eliminated from this game. I'm not sure if they asked for a constructor or whatnot, but uh, we'd love to see them building in the back line here. They've done their they've done their job. They've been a they've been a contributing member to this team, and they've they've carried us this far. Very nicely done by Pers Personoic to get that fighter screen up and running. Very, very nicely done. You never know when somebody on the other team is going to go for that really dangerous bombing run. That unscouted bombing run that could have been completely prevented, but uh, <laughs> it just happened to go through because there was no fighter screen whatsoever. Meanwhile, Quiet Listener has taken over the northern facility here. Taking over a uh, southern commander as well. As a bunch of these Seekers just continue to be absolutely completely helplessly annoying in the back lines <laughs> also giving vision though so it does it does allow these bombers to target a little more accurately here i'd love to see them blow up all of these advanced fusion reactors it's a very high metal cost area so it's uh, it's always worth it to go for a couple of those sending the constructor back to finally build some build power back here so we can actually pump out units at a decent pace sending the commander to go eat up wreckages over here because there's actually quite a lot of metal that was left over in this area Meanwhile, down south, the battle has essentially been won. Units are continuing to stream through, and we didn't see a quick enough response to get T2 out and about to counter that push. So it means that Hired Goon is in a whole lot of trouble. It means that uh, Mikkel is in a whole lot of trouble, too. And things are suddenly starting to look our way. See the artillery now disassembling this front line. I'm not sure what happened here. I'm not sure why uh, the yellow player has suddenly tapped out. I'm not, I'm not even sure when they tapped out, but it looks like nobody took when they did, so uh, unfortunate there. Meanwhile, the base has been ravaged up north, and it is down to the last four on the red team. Quiet listener, the uh, the last northern commander that I have to deal with. I guess the Joker is up here too, produce, producing those hovercraft. Probably should have gone for the tanks a little bit sooner, those rocket hovercraft. I think the idea was to put those rocket cover, ro hovercraft somewhere around the ocean over here. That way the uh, the rockets could come up and over the wall and start bursting down things over here. But I definitely don't think they anticipated that I would have a whole bunch of those Seekers out. Oh, that was a nice D-gun. Caught two of them and lasered down the third one. Quiet Listener doing a good job of keeping my forces routed here. Meanwhile, my commander is starting to take damage. This is a cheeky little move. There is a push happening down here, but I have to show off this move because it was, uh, it was just so beautiful. Take the commander. Turn it on, hold fire cloak it and start capturing the uh, submarine here. <laughs> Commanders can capture while cloaked, which is uh, good to know for anybody that might be curious. Now the bulls are out though and they are causing a lot of harm. Super Lux, the commander is in a lot of trouble, but the bulls are actually running right by it. They don't finish off the job trying to kill that commander. Uh, and so Super Lux actually manages to get away. Now Faerun is, is pushing forward. What on earth is this? Faerun is flying the commander around the southern side here. Quiet Listener says, lol, everyone quit. Yeah, they're not wrong. Looks like basically everyone did quit. I'm not sure why the middle of the map suddenly quit out. 
either a disconnect there or some other issue. Um, but either way, yeah, a lot of the middle of the map was completely taken down. Now a commander is in the back line here. Faerun decides, I've had enough of this. I'm just going to put a commander in the very back of the map. Meanwhile, the middle of the map is slowly getting pushed in here. We do have a bunch of these pounders. Man, they are devastating. You get enough of them in a line like that, and they are just going to be unstoppable. Uh, that being said, that's a lot of gauntlets. That's three gauntlets right there. A little bit of knockback on every one of those gauntlets. So it's, uh, yeah, it's actually pretty hard to move forward. Well, I think eventually we could. Yeah, I'd love to see these units step forward rather than just being bursted down by the artillery there. The crocodiles are hovering onward. So this is, this is the, the two things that I learned from this game. One of them is to continue expanding your energy production uh, via windmills, if at all possible. Just build a massive array of windmills in, the, in your back line, and you're going to have a fun time. 1,300-ish uh, metal investment to get about 600 energy per second. Yeah, I'll take that. It's pretty good. Okay, Rune, continuing to move the commander around over here. No anti-air. We haven't really been... Well, actually, there was that bombing run, so I'm not sure why there's not anti-air. We really should see some. Bulls are just being tickled down by whatever units can kind of walk in this direction here. Hound will eventually shoot them down. One by one by one. And the Joker is the last remaining member on this team. We're going to speed this up because I do remember that from here on... Uh, it was just a slow and grueling match. This guy got a plan or just stole him a game. <laughs> you can see that the Joker is still building these uh, terribly inefficient title generators. Eventually, we will leave those behind. But man, could have been uh, could have been so much better. Also, continue to build those title generators right next to those energy converters. So they just kept they kept dying so quickly. The crocodiles do find this commander, and it will go up in smoke. And the Hornets will find the uh, the northern one up here. This commander is spotted eventually. And the Hornets get to work. Oops. The Hornets get to work, I say. There we go. <laughs> yeah, those Hornets do pretty good against those uh, against commanders. Definitely viable to snipe them. Anyways, that's going to be the end of this game. The red team does finally tap out. And we managed to clutch out the victory. Wow, I won the efficiency award. I actually didn't see that coming. With how many seekers I was just throwing across the map, I thought uh, for sure I wouldn't win that one. But anyways, what can we learn from this map? Well, let's take a look at the graph and see how I did. Yeah, kind of middle of the pack, but you can see that we just continued to keep scaling our economies, whereas the red team just got wiped out one by one by one. You can see every economy that, that failed to scale uh, eventually backfired here. Really surprised by the yellow player who was wiped out there. Had all of the metal extractors in the middle of the map here. Move this out of the way. Had all the metal extractors in the middle of the map here. Had all of the time in the world to tech up back at home. And for some reason, still managed to uh, clutch defeat from the jaws of victory. <laughs> oh well. Anyways, it was a hard fought game. It was very, very nice to see. And I hope you enjoyed watching. Anyways, I will see you in the next episode. Peace out.